वॉट इज अप गाइज कैसे हो आप लोग वेलकम टू द ट्वेंटी थ्री राइड्स चैनल वी हैव बीन राइडिंग द ट्राइम्फ स्क्रैम्बलर फोर हंड्रेड एक्स फॉर दिस होल डे इट्स अ ब्राइट एंड सनी आफ्टरनून वेरी ह्यूमिड एंड आफ्टर राइडिंग द मोटरसाइकिल फॉर ऑलमोस्ट फोर एंड हाफ आवर्स आई थॉट ऑफ मेकिंग दिस वीडियो एंड शेयरिंग माई फर्स्ट राइड इम्प्रेशन ऑफ दिस ब्रांड न्यू स्क्रैम्बलर फोर हंड्रेड एक्स विद यू फर्स्ट थिंग्स फर्स्ट लेट्स स्टार्ट विद वट आर द चेंजेस इन द स्क्रैम्बलर फोर हंड्रेड एक्स फ्रॉम द स्पीड फोर हंड्रेड The Speed 400, as we all know, came to the market around three months back, and essentially both the bikes have the same engine, same power figure, same torque. But this motorcycle is thirty thousand rupees expensive in terms of the ex showroom price. This comes in at two point six three lakhs ex showroom, while the Speed 400 was starting at two point three three lakhs. So the big question is, what do you get extra for spending the additional thirty thousand rupees over the Speed 400 in the Scrambler 400X? In last evening's briefing that was done by Bajaj and Triumph, there were actually seven things that I got to know. that are there in this mode cycle uh, when you compare it to the speed 400 the first thing that i need to talk about is the suspension obviously this beautiful looking usd golden forks are the highlight of the mode cycle the speed 400 had 130 mm of travel at the front and 140 mm of travel in the rear while the scrambler 400 has 150 mm of travel both at the front and rear that means additional 10 mm travel on the front and 20 mm additional travel at the rear so that is the biggest change although these figures are an increase i somehow feel that the 10 mm travel in the front is not adequate to justify the off road ambitions of this motorcycle but anyways let's move on to the second point the second thing that comes on the scrambler 400x is the headlight grill protection that comes as stock also you get these plastic knuckle guards as stock on the scrambler 400x for starters on a motorcycle in this price segment i think this is a good add on that triumph is giving also this one gets a sump guard as stock now this sump guard is pretty strong and of course this is not a proper hardcore off roader but for doing those ladakh and spiti rides i think this sort of a sum guard should work fine now there is a caveat to this sum guard and what is hidden behind it i'll talk about it later in the video another point of difference is the 19 inch tire that you get on the scrambler 400x these tires are of course meant to tackle those obstacles so that you maintain the line on those off road sections much better than a 17 inch standard tire the other major difference is the seat height on this scrambler which is 835 mm now uh, just to give you guys a reference i am 180 cm in height which is just shy of 6 feet and i am able to flat foot this motorcycle very easily now for the average indian height i think this will be a little tall but if you compare it to what we have as competition to this motorcycle in the market like the adv 390 that has an 850 mm seat height although it is a little more narrower than this but you know this motorcycle is definitely not for the very short riders i think anyone above 5 6 and 7 can manage it but below that i think this will be a struggle now with the increased seat height one thing that comes is the increased ground clearance as well because of course you want to do some sort of off roading so the ground clearance on the scrambler 400x is increased to 195 mm which is very decent for its class another improvement in the scrambler version is the bigger front disc The Speed 400 has a 300 mm front disc, and this one has a 320 mm front disc. The second last change that I want to talk about is the ability to turn off traction control in this one, where as you can see, it says traction control on and off. That is the switch here, and another one is a dedicated off-road mode, which helps you turn off ABS on the rear wheel. And finally, the last change that is there in this motorcycle, which is the 9 kg additional weight. Now that 9 kg additional weight comes because of multiple things that have been added on the motorcycle like I told you the sum guard is added the headlight grill is added a beefier exhaust is added and most importantly the wheels have been reinforced and made of heavier and stronger materials so that they can take to the slight or light off roading that you want to do on this machine Now let me just talk about the most important thing in any motorcycle which is the riding geometry how are all the contact points on your body aligning with the overall geometry of the motorcycle so for example when i'm sitting on this motorcycle one thing that comes to my mind is that this seems to be a very comfortable machine the reach to the handlebars is very easy the position of the foot pegs also is very neutral it's not uh, in front it's not rear set so it's just 
below you which i think is a very big factor in any off road oriented motorcycle because when the footrests and your feet are directly below your body they also act as suspension uh, those this whole knee area when you saddle and stand up the overall position the rider will assume on this motorcycle is very comfortable nothing that is putting a strain on my wrists on my shoulders on my upper back nothing this is like as good as sitting on a proper adventure touring motorcycle although this is not one but still it feels as comfortable as that the position while saddling is also very comfortable if you tuck your knees in and try to saddle for a guy who is like 6 feet tall which is above average uh, i would at max need a 1 inch riser nothing more than that the riding position is almost spot on uh, for majority of the audience who would want to buy this motorcycle i think they would not need to tinker with anything on the riding position everything is just fine you will feel very comfortable aisa lagega baithe ro is bike pe chalate ho i have already talked about the 835 mm seat height of this motorcycle for me it's fine but i also wanted to show you how this would feel on a person who is 5657 5, yeah so guri if you can come over and sit on this motorcycle i think that will also give a perspective so now we have guri who is going to sit on this scrambler 400x his height is 5657 yeah that is that is your height and you can clearly see that he is not able to flat foot the motorcycle by the way he rides an expulse on which he feels that he is able to flat foot much better but this one maybe just because of the width at the waist section of the motorcycle he is not able to flat foot uh, for your information he is not wearing proper riding shoes so maybe some sort of heels on the riding shoes will also help but this is how it will look for a 5657 person another thing that i would want to talk about in the whole riding geometry is where you place your butt and the seat on this motorcycle i feel first of all from an aesthetic standpoint is one of the biggest highlights of the motorcycle like i've said multiple times along with the forks the golden forks that are kind of the star attraction of the motorcycle this uh, tan or brown or coke whatever you want to call this color this seat color looks amazing and lends a very premium feel to the motorcycle from a comfort standpoint after riding for about 4 hours today I think I do not have any issues with this seat. Right amount of cushioning. It's not too hard, not too soft. Uh, helps you remain planted on the motorcycle. It's not something that will uh, make you bounce around when you are hitting those bumps. I also want to talk about the pillion comfort on this motorcycle. Uh, the rear seat looks small, but it is very comfortable. So yesterday we were trying to sit both of us, me and Guri. Guri was sitting as a pillion, and he was saying that it's absolutely comfortable. But I feel that along with Uh, the mods that are coming from Triumph and other third-party manufacturers, where you will get a top box uh, installation option as well. I think this will be a very comfortable option for your better half as well if you want to tour together on the motorcycle. So let us do the most important thing in any motorcycle: make you guys hear the exhaust note. Of course, this has that double barrel exhaust that promises to be something that sounds like the bigger scramblers. So as you heard uh, the exhaust has some sort of base Let's also talk about how this motorcycle performs I felt that 40 bhp of power 38 newton meters of torque is actually living up to the specs in the real ride experience as well Nowhere did I feel that there was any sort of knocking in the motorcycle I tried to ride the motorcycle on 6th gear at 40 kmph and trust you me guys there was no knocking at all 80% of the torque say around 30 is delivered as low as 3500 rpm so everything comes in very early and the biggest testament to that fact is right now if you see what speeds i am doing and at what gear 5th gear we are doing what 45 50 kmph even if i go into the 6th no issues at all we are in the 6th gear right now and what 50 55 kmph just below 60 very easy let me go as low as possible on the speed and see when the knocking starts typically on a single cylinder that is what you would get and yeah nothing even at 40 kmph nothing absolutely perfect so you can pull this motorcycle in any gear <laughs> These are roads that are new to me so I just want to be a little careful that 
I am aware of what's coming on my way. This kind of a countryside route. Murge aage bhai beech mein. Yo. So, so engine tractability standpoint, I think this is amazing. The character is very relaxed. Now, uh, why I want to stress on that fact is because anyone who's going to buy this motorcycle is going to spend maybe around 3.2 lakhs on road, 3 lakhs on road at least, right? When you get this motorcycle home, uh, depending on which city you are in. But at the same time, you also have a KTM Adventure 390 in the market, which is bordering around the 4 lakh rupee mark. 390 Adventure, like all of us know, is very rev happy, wants to be ridden at very high revs. And the moment you start riding it slow, you start feeling the knocking and the vibes coming in, the suspension is stiff. But this one, I think, is a motorcycle that is meant for more mature riders who want to enjoy the complete rev range of the motorcycle. I hear a lot of people saying that they love to cruise at 130, 140 kmph and this motorcycle will not disappoint on that department. And as you have seen in multiple speed tests, like the Speed 400, it can easily touch 145, 50 without a hassle. So for me, the performance is top notch. The posture, the overall feel of the motorcycle is something that is much beyond the price tag that it comes at. Next up, let's talk about the brakes on this motorcycle. Like I told you at the start of the video, this one comes with a bigger disc than the Speed 400. This has a 320 mm disc. Let me just brake. Yeah, no drama at all. I use the brakes maybe at a 40% effort, not that 100% thing. Uh, nothing of an intrusion from the traction control, the ABS, the unnecessary drama that happens. I couldn't feel the pulsing sensation, so I think they have calibrated the ABS pretty well. When we talk about the heating of this motorcycle, of course, this is a 400cc motorcycle, 40 bhp of power, 38 newton meters of torque. You expect some sort of a heat from this sort of a machine, especially considering what we have in the market in that same bhp and torque range. Uh, I'm referring obviously to the 390 Adventures and 390 Dukes. Those two motorcycles produce hell lot of a heat more than what you have on the Triumph. This is a much cooler running motorcycle, much less compression ratio and hence a overall smoother motorcycle throughout the entire rev range which makes this motorcycle very, uh, I would say, easy to ride in even in uh, humid and hot conditions. I'm still not feeling any sort of heat on either of my legs so that is I would say kudos to Triumph for managing such an engine with such good heat management. One thing that happens pretty often though is that the radiator fan kicks in pretty early. Almost every time I stop the motorcycle, the radiator fan is already kicked in. So I've just stopped the motorcycle to show you what sort of, to make you hear actually the sound of the radiator fan. It's switched on and let me just switch off the ignition of the radiator fan. Now it turns off. <laughs> so this is kind of on every time I switch off the motorcycle. Now let us talk about the highlight why this variant was actually you know launched by Triumph is its off-roading capabilities. So we have not done a lot of off-roading but we have done some I would say trails mild trails today and for me the riding posture the saddling position was near perfect like I told you earlier as well. Maybe for my height and frame I would want a one inch riser installed which I think will be very soon available in the market once this you know goes out for sale and even when I was not in the right gear and sometimes we were also riding two up while going up a slope uh, even on third gear at crawling speeds where many motorcycles would stall this thing didn't stall so the overall uh, approachability of this motorcycle is very good it is very forgiving in terms of the the setting that you would want to maintain between the throttle and the clutch I wish it had a little more uh, suspension travel at the front, just a 10 mm increase from the Speed 400. I mean, I didn't like that because there were instances where this motorcycle started to bottom out a little bit. I could hear that thud from the front part of the suspension, the front suspension, I should say. If they would have increased the travel on the front suspension, say around by 20 mm instead of 10, I think this would have been much better. That's my personal take. Now, since we were just talking about off-roading, I think I should also address the monster in the room. The bigger question that every motorcyclist has in its mind, we talk about any category of motorcycles, anyone who buys a motorcycle in India at least wants to go to Ladakh on that motorcycle, irrespective of the category they are investing in. I mean, we have seen people doing Ladakh on an RC390 as well. So everyone wants to do Ladakh on whatever motorcycle they have. This one, I think, 
can be used to do those Ladakh and Spiti trips very easily because the riding geometry supports that. I have told hundreds of times in my previous videos that any motorcycle that has the correct riding geometry where your feet are directly below your body that will help you do off-roading much better than any motorcycle which has rear set foot pegs or even foot pegs that are far beyond you. Talking about the fuel tank when we are talking about touring, 13 litre fuel tank with about 26-27 kilometers per litre, I think it can easily give you a range between 330 kilometers to 360 kilometers depending on how you ride and where you ride it. So that is a very decent range. Just for reference, my Tiger 900 gives me a range of around 380 to 400. So not much of a difference. The comfort level is also very good. So a saddlebag setup along with the pillion and you ready with Ladakh in your heart, I think you can easily tour on this motorcycle on Ladakh. Talking about uh, the maintenance and the reliability of this motorcycle, something that is really top notch is that once you get this motorcycle home, so the first service happens in the first thousand kilometers, which will be around 2000 rupees. And after that, the next service will happen after 16,000 kilometers on the Odo. That's a huge interval. That is one thing I feel will lend a lot of peace of mind. Along with that, one thing that really comes in handy with this sort of a motorcycle is Triumph offering a five year extended warranty in the price. Can you imagine that 2.6 lakhs ex showroom and five years extended warranty. That means that you don't have to worry about anything going wrong with the motorcycle for five years. How many people keep a motorcycle for five years? That percentage I feel is not very, very high in India at least. Especially if you're talking about folks in the North India region, uh, they tend to you know switch motorcycles pretty fast. So uh, that's what I feel. But the other parts of India, people tend to keep it long. So you can get that guarantee, that safety net of the peace of mind that you will get after investing those 2.6 lakhs rupees on the Triumph Scrambler 400X. So I think that is something that is really going to be a game changer for Triumph, especially for a brand that is known for its premiumness. It will help get a lot of people more into the Triumph fold of things. And talking about the service network, what I got to know yesterday in the briefing that was done, uh, at the start of the year, before the launch of the Speed 400, Triumph had around 10 dealerships in India. Right now, they have around 25, so already 2.5x more. And by the end of March 2024, they will have 100 dealerships across India. So a lot of dealerships will be opening up and the service rate will increase. So I think we have done a lot of praises of this motorcycle. We have talked about a lot of good things. Now let's also consider some things that I felt could have been better on this beauty. I call it a beauty because I think from a look standpoint, this looks stunning and I kind of had my heart on this motorcycle in terms of maybe it could be a second bike in my garage. But there are some things that I think need an improvement. The first thing that I think Triumph should have really looked at is the position at which they have placed the coolant reservoir. The coolant reservoir is just protected by this sump guard. And the sump guard, although it seems strong, but I just cannot get my mind around the fact that uh, after the sump guard is the coolant reservoir. And if God forbid on any ride that you do, for example, you're on a Ladakh or Spiti ride, you end up hitting something very badly on the sump guard. It can easily go through and rupture this coolant reservoir. The second thing which could have been better on this motorcycle is that if Triumph could also have come up with an option which would provide spoke wheels on this 19-incher front wheel. If they have created such a beautiful machine, why not you know create a full frigid off-road option that has the spoke wheel options as well. The third thing that could have been better, I feel, in 2023 for this sort of a motorcycle is the instrument cluster. The instrument cluster, I feel, looks a little dated and if Triumph would have included some sort of a TFT screen or maybe an option that displays information which is much more readable. For example, this part I think is very difficult to read. As someone new to the motorcycle, it was very difficult for me to you know find where the time is this whole uh, you know basic sort of a reading of the odometer also is not something that is very attractive there is definitely a scope maybe in the next iteration of the 400 series for triumph to rework on this instrument cluster and finally the last thing which i am you know really i would say a little disappointed about is just the 10 mm increase in travel for the front suspension while on paper this is an increase but I really hoped that this increase would have translated into better absorption of bumps. Now, don't get me wrong, the suspension is not bad. Nothing that will, you know, break your back or 
feel very very uncomfortable but for me i felt a motorcycle which has some sort of an off road potential should have slightly better suspension maybe a little bit of better travel maybe a 20 mm travel would have been better it's just the suspension which i feel could have been a little better in terms of absorption of bumps and providing a pliant ride which is i feel missing on this motorcycle so all in all that is all i had to you know share with you guys about my first ride on the scrambler 400x from triumph now if you are in the market to buy a motorcycle under 3.5 lakhs and uh, have an intention of doing some sort of off roading on it is it the right time to make the decision now this is a very tricky question while this option is something that is very good in terms of the quality the feel the brand uh, image that it carries i would personally want to wait for at least 15 to 20 days to see what's there on offer from the competition so that is all about the scrambler 400x from my side guys i am pretty sure you would have some questions i am open to answering those questions in the comment section so shoot in your comments and i'll try to answer most of the comments to best of my knowledge and i'll see you in the next video guys bye bye